Hey, I'm Coral, and a couple of months ago, I bought this uh, sort of off-brand remote for my Sony camera. Turns out that Sony nowadays have like a special Bluetooth protocol, and I wanted a remote in order to be able to take pictures on a tripod. And this is probably the most underwhelming device I've purchased in a long time. It wasn't that expensive, but you expect a remote to be good at being a remote. It's kind of the primary use case. You know, you want to have a remote and you press the button and the camera takes a picture. Sadly, that's not at all what this thing does. This thing sometimes doesn't even work. It sometimes pairs, sometimes hangs out of nowhere. It's a very underwhelming device. And I'm not going to spend, what is it, $90 to buy the official one because it's just a Bluetooth Low Energy Remote. I decided to just like make my own. So I'm just gonna walk you through sort of this project and how, how we will make our own device that works with the uh, Bluetooth protocol for the Sony cameras. So let's start by covering the Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I think it's important to at least cover some pieces of it for it to be easier to understand what I'm doing in this video. So first of all, you have the two different class of devices. You have the central and the peripheral. The central is kind of in, in charge and the peripheral is what we can think of as the device that the thing is connecting to. So if you have a phone, for example, that would act as the central and the camera in this case is the peripheral. But the peripheral can be anything from like a heart rate monitor to a smart light. And each of these have a bunch of services. So when they developed the Bluetooth Low Energy Protocol, they had this great idea that they define a set of like generic services that everyone can use that can be, you know, scales, heart rate monitors, you know, remotes, keyboard, mouse, for example. And the reason for this is that you don't want each manufacturer to come up with their own protocol, because that way you would never have a Bluetooth keyboard that would work with the other Bluetooth keyboard and you would have to have drivers for them and you would have to have drivers for your mouse and that would be a nightmare. So they define a set of services and each service has a set of characteristics. And the characteristic is basically you either read from them or you write from them. There's some more nuance, you can kind of be notified when something happens, but it's basically just like characteristic can act as more like I can receive data or I can give you data. But the service kind of describes what is this characteristic doing? So for example, if you have a heart rate monitor, one service might say in the definition that this characteristic is going to notify you of heart rate. And the heart rate is going to be a 16-bit integer and you can parse it like this. It's defined in the standard. That means if you're running your own heart rate monitor, you don't have to like re-implement the protocol there's a service you can use that makes it work with, you know, Garmin smartwatches, with iPhones, Androids, like it would just work. So it's kind of cool. And I'm thinking like, oh, great. So there must be then a service that is for the camera. But of course, in Sony's infinite wisdom, they decided to not use a service and that was defined, just to come up with their own. So we need to start with figuring out like, what does the camera actually expose? So to do that, I have a piece of software called BlueSea that runs on, this case, Mac. But there are versions of this with Windows as well, and I think for Linux. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the camera and press scan. And what this will show us is kind of what's in the air. And you can see here is my smartwatch, but this is what we're looking for really, which is the Sony Corporation ILC E7M3, which happens to be what Sony calls the camera, the model number. So, it has a UUID, which identifies the camera uniquely and it has manufacturer data. And this is really interesting, we'll get to that in a bit. So let's open this camera, drag it up here. You can see here, it has a generic access profile, which basically is the standard service to facilitate contact with a with a device. So even in the standard, you're using services just to establish a connection. So let's go ahead and connect to the camera. So if I connect to the camera, suddenly you see that we are now discovered the services that the camera publishes. And there's a bunch of different services. We have FF or 800FF, 800DD, EECC, for example. So what does these do? Well, I did find some resources on the internet that kind of describes what these does in general, but sadly, these resources decided to omit the actual interesting information. What are we going to write and read from them? They kind of just describe what do these things do. So that didn't really help us, but it did help me understand that the DD1, for example, is a geolocation service that is used between the app and the device to write the GPS data to the, to the camera if you enable that. EE, can't remember, 
The CC1 was some sort of like advanced remote protocol that is used by the app. We're not going to use that. Really what we're interested in is the FF protocol. And this is the Bluetooth remote protocol that is used by the remote with the camera. So I'm going to show you that it works by pressing down the shutter on the camera. And you're going to see basically the first thing in the list here, the FF02, change when I acquire focus and lose focus. So if I don't do anything, it's a 0, zero and if I hold down the focus, it's a 20, take a picture and we go cycle through a couple of different commands. So this seems to me like this is the thing that is speaking back to remote, like what's the state of the camera is. And this is basically a right characteristic, which allows us to write to the camera. So this is most likely what the, the remote is sending to the camera. So in order to understand what the remote says to the camera, we need to somehow sniff the traffic between these two. And lucky for me, and for you in this case, Adafruit sells this small Bluetooth sniffer. I'll link this in the description, of course, <clears throat> that allows you to use Wireshark to listen to the traffic. And if you capture the handshake between the peripheral and the central, it also allows to decrypt the encrypted traffic and give you insight into what these are writing back and forth. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the small sniffer and we're going to just then use Wireshark to figure this out. Let's start here by opening the um, sniffer device. This Murata MA is actually the camera. I happen to know this <laughs> at this point. So with that said, let's go into Bluetooth settings. Let's go into pairing. Let's hold these two down to pair. See here, the pairing has started. And you can see we get all the messages here in Wireshark. We are paired. So now it's just about using the remote as you would normally use the remote. And Wireshark is going to pick up on these messages. I'm going to do this a few times to get us enough data. And from there, we can analyze it. So here we have the entire back and forth captured. And I can then go ahead and say, you know, we have all these messages. So let's go ahead and filter for what we're actually looking for. And we're looking for the ATT commandos sent between the remote and the camera. So let's write a display filter for that, BT ATT in Wireshark. And this just gives us kind of like the filtered list of those commands. And specifically, I know that we started to use the remote here. So we can here see that when I press the remote, the remote first sends 0106, which from my understanding means reset the state. We then send 0107, which seems to take the focus of the camera. And when we take the focus, the camera sends first, I am not acquired focus, which is 3F00, and then 3F20 when it has acquired focus. From there, when the remote knows that focus has been acquired, it sends 0109, which takes the picture. And when I let go, after it gets the A2, A020, it will send 0108 and then 0106. So this is the full communication between the remote of the camera in order to take a picture. So we can easily test if this works. First by typing 0016 into Blue C, which resets the camera. After that, we're typing 0017, which is going to acquire the focus, then 0018. And after that, we type 0019, which should take the picture. So I type 019, took the picture. And that way we know this actually works. So remember earlier when I said that the manufactured data was super interesting? It's because Sony used this for the camera to signal what state is currently in. And we need to use this to, first of all, identify the camera, but second of all, know if we can attempt to pair the camera or not. So for, here's an example of what an 87 Mark III advertises. It's 2D, 01, 03, 00, 64, 00, 45, 31, 22, EF00. So what does these bytes mean? And I think the first two ones are easy to identify if you know the Sony manufacturer code, which happens to be 012D. But since BLE marks stuff in little endian, we have to read these bytes backwards. So if we read them backward, 012D, we know that that's actually the manufacturer code of Sony. From there, there's some bytes to indicate what kind of device it is, the protocol version. We get to 4531, which in ASCII means E1. So that signifies the E-mount camera I have. And here comes the magic part. We have 22EF00. And the camera will use 22 to indicate like a tag and it indicates a tag and then the value and then 00 to mark the end of the tag. In our case, what we're looking for is the EF. And EF means the camera is open for pairing. It has some other meaning, but you can basically treat it as that. If the camera weren't open to pairing, this would be AF instead. So to find a camera open to pair, we first have to search for a BLE device that has the 2D, 01, 03, 00, et etc. And then we skip until we find 22EF00 because like, you know, the model code might be different for another camera. And this is how the remote actually finds the camera regardless if it's an A9 or an A7. So now we know what the remote does to find the camera. We know what the remote sends to the camera when you take a picture and we know what the camera responds back to the remote. 
So now the question is like, how are we going to go about re-implementing this on some sort of device? And the important thing to consider is we need a device that can act as a central, because if you think about it, the camera actually acts as a peripheral, whereas the remote is the central. So the camera is expecting us to facilitate the connection and to set up the connection. So we need a ship that is easy to program against and can set up the connection. And I'm going to use the Adafruit NRF52840, which is Adafruit's kind of feather board. So it has a Nordic Semiconductor ship on it. It has a battery charger, USB, all the stuff built in. It's a bit bigger than I would want to, but I don't have to deal with like, you know, attaching programmers. I don't need to add a battery charger. I don't have to wait for this to get, you know, printed on a circuit board. Like I can use this today. You can buy these, which I think is why I wanted to use them. Because if you want to use this yourself, you can just buy one of these and try it. And I mean, the code, Hopefully it's gonna be easy enough to port something else. So that's what I'm going to use for this. So I guess with that said, like the only thing left to do is to do some, you know, YouTube montage of me building this and programming this. So let's do it. have the final remote turn out great actually so we you know we'll turn it on it's a physical hardware switch that shows the on state we have a led that shows the state of the remote you know turn green which means it's connected if i hold the camera if i hold the remote press the remote takes a picture press again takes a picture this is what you want out of a remote right you know it just works that's kind of why i built this to prove that it's possible to not build a remote that is as bad as the other one you know I took the liberty to use two buttons. So if you want to use autofocus and you want to hold the focus, you can hold the first button and press the second, which kind of takes the focus similarly to pressing the first, the other button and like half step. And I added a switch to the right to kind of like indicate if you wanted to keep shooting, if you want to have burst shooting, or if you also want to take one picture. Um, the code is on GitHub. I published everything here, including the free models. If you want to go ahead and print this yourself, flash this ship and just like solder this together, you're free. If you want to do something else with that code, it's up to you. It's under a nice license. Uh, other than that, if I could, you know, think a bit of what I did wrong here, I would have, you know, I designed this to be as small as possible. And the problem is the, the ship's connector for the battery is on the side, which meant that I had to place it to kind of the side of the enclosure. That creates this kind of unsymmetrical design with the screws. I don't like that. You know, the fact that this connector isn't in the middle is a bit annoying. Uh, if I redid it, I probably would have made it a bit more chunky, so I could have had it in the middle just for the visual symmetry. The same goes for this LED. If I redid this and like actually printed a circuit board, I of course would have put the LED somewhere here. I would have put it close to the top. Right now, there's definitely like a it's a gap here. And you know, I could have done, I could have been a bit more cautious when I decided in Suffusion, but you know, this is the first prototype. They're never perfect. It is what it is. So with that said, you know, please check it out. I also put the links in the description if you're interested. And if not, thanks for watching this video, like this excursion into, I don't know, insane remote building. I'll see you later.